everyone, welcome back to another exciting edition of The Untold with Hadil and Ahmed. Hadil, I love how you said yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Today, <laughs> you're yes. going to enjoy this episode. Yes. This I've is... been waiting to talk about wrestling, and it's not even a wrestling topic, but I'm going to make it about wrestling. I'm not that much into wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I watched a few, mm -hmm. but I'm not really, like, all right, not my all right, thing. All right. So today, the floor is yours. Uh, we'll have You're going to steal we'll the fun. spotlight today. <laughs> So, yeah. All right, let's, let's not waste any time and welcome our guests right after this. Back on The Untold with our guest, Coach Qasim. Welcome on The Untold. Hi, guys. Thank you. Thank you for having Welcome me here. Welcome to The Untold. Pleasure. You're a man with uh, many qualifications. In martial arts. In martial yeah. arts, but also you did some football. And by football, I think we mean soccer. Yes. Soccer. <laughs> soccer. Really football. Real football. Real, Real football. football. <laughs> Real football. Huh? Um, soccer football. Okay. <laughs> we invented it. We invented it. <laughs> we invented it. Yeah. So... Um, okay. Let's go from there. Um, so there's there's football, there's uh, mixed martial arts, there's fitness. Yeah. Let's start with your story. And you're a personal how trainer. You, yeah. yeah. How did you... I always start from high school. After high yeah. school, how did you pick your career path? So uh, obviously in England, football is a predominant sport. Right. So I started off playing football and then at the age of 14, me and my family, we moved to Dubai. Nice. Uh, and this was just as football was growing and uh, the academy I started playing at was like the first academy in Dubai. Mm. So my coach then, who was from England, moved there. Nice. He smashed it, he opened it up. And then I was playing and then he thought, okay, at 15, let's try you as a coach. Give me that opportunity to teach. And then I just, I fell in love with coaching whilst playing, teaching the next generation. And especially... Coaching at 15? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally wow. because... Like I said, it was growing so fast right. in Dubai. Mm. We needed coaches and the new venues. And he thought I was ready. So I did that. I did my qualifications at 16 to become a football coach. I started really, really young. Really young. Honestly. So by the time I was 21 I, and I moved back to the I had like five or six years behind me. So um, it was great, great to start young. And then carried on playing football, moved into semi-professional, won different competitions. Mm. I progressed through my qualifications in football coaching and then at around 22 I got injured Ooh. on my knee and it was like football is one of them like knee injuries are big in football yes uh, huge just the, 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 it's a lot of things you guys do on the field how long did it take <laughs> you to heal it was it was it an ACL eight, thing or was it no it was just um, tear I tried to come back too quick mm. too many times okay so at the age of 22 Mm -hmm. You're on the brink of like, okay, you have to do it now. So I got fit, then I rushed, got injured again. Mm. And then I was like, okay, hold on, it's, uh, the no end more. of football? Yeah, the end of football. Okay. And then you pursued a career in... Martial arts. Martial arts. Yeah. Martial how, arts did, how did you pivot to martial arts? So martial arts was always my first love as a child. Like oh, Jackie you Chan. Oh. You know watching Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Van Damme. Van Damme. That's, that's <laughs> classic now. All these Power Rangers. All mm. the... I Power was, Rangers? I was addicted. Were they really into martial arts? Yes, but they were using martial arts. What do you think they were using? It didn't feel like, you know, as a kid it was fun, but again, you cannot compare that to Pro Not Bruce a Power Lee. Rangers fan. Okay. Come <laughs> on. I, used to wa I watched every single episode as a kid. Ninja Turtles? I've seen them. That was Ninja. That okay. Was real. Okay. That's but did you practice martial arts at a young age? A little bit, but there wasn't a lot of opportunity. The first class classes I actually did was in New York. Oh. Yeah, my auntie used to live in New York. Oh, so you were visiting? Yeah, so when I was visiting, she took me to karate schools a few times. Nice. And then, growing up, I don't think my family really wanted me to go into fighting, so they were like... Karate football. and, like, uh, other forms of uh, martial arts aren't big in the UK, as in karate classes and all that stuff? They used to at be. At your time? And at my time, there was... There was a few, mm. but not a lot in my no, area. Okay, okay. Yeah, and uh, it's very common in Kuwait. Very yeah, popular. Yeah, yeah, huge. Yeah. I've seen that. I've yeah. seen that. Um, yeah, there wasn't a lot in my area, and not a lot where people mixed as well. So you know, different okay, communities from I different see. backgrounds yeah, fair, mixed. Fair, fair. So, so you pivoted to martial arts because of your love for martial arts yes. from all these movies yeah. and the passion you've developed. Mm. But how did you get into mixed martial arts and being a trainer? So. 
I remember around the age of 15 or 16, I was just watching TV and I saw the UFC. Mm. Just that one of the events. Right. Uh, some of the fighters, mm. Forrest Griffin and all these old school guys. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. And then after football, I was actually on a course and this girl that was in my team, her brother was a martial arts fighter, a professional mm. in Manchester where I'm from and from the top teams. And I was like, okay, I need to meet this guy. Mm. He was a judo, uh, Olympic judo fighter as well. So mm. he was very high level. So I messaged him and he was like, yeah, come down to the gym. And I went, I watched and I was like, yes, I need to do this. So I just jumped straight in, signed up the membership. Wow. That same week, kickboxing, boxing classes. And I was like, I need to do this. You I fell in love straight away. So what is your favorite type of martial arts? Oh, whatever Jackie Chan did, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I think when mixed martial arts came, it stopped the like the old school kung fu and things mm, like that. Mm, mm. But I love striking, kickboxing, and boxing. Um, I do. Res I love judo as an art because it's an such art. a beautiful yeah. art. It is. But now mixed martial arts is a complete martial arts. There's no right. It's everything. It combines everything. 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 everything combines There's no everything. weakness. There's no know? one style. Those are separate martial arts. Mm. Whether it's a standing, they're not good at takedowns. Mm. If they're grappling based, they're not good at striking. Mm. But mixed martial arts, everything together. It's uh, the ultimate form. And Grappling it's always developing, that, yeah, always, it's developing always developing new tactics. So traveling from one country to other, you've been in Dubai, you've been in London, you've been in Kuwait, you've been to other countries. How is it like to adjusting to different environments and you know putting your uh, your skills into different cultures like these? Adapting just with the different era that you're in. Like I said, when I was in Qatar, it was around the COVID area, and now with the different sports as well. And how like, do you meet people? Like yeah, I think when I went from football, now everybody went through a paddle craze. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, paddle, paddle. tennis craze. I so it's always adapting, you know. And now martial arts now, and now in Kuwait, I've seen a huge progression in jujitsu. Mm. So much, so many youth love jujitsu. It's yeah, crazy. Jiu so you just you move with the trends. So True. like I started teaching like fitness to paddle players before. Mm. Now we're moving into jujitsu. So a lot of the children or adults want to learn strength and conditioning for nice. jujitsu. So you kind of adapt with the times and what's around you. But you have to be flexible. And are you only train uh, coaching martial uh, mixed martial arts, or are you actually wanting to compete as well? Yeah. I'm, uh, I, I did compete. I had okay. several fights. MMA fights. Uh, kickboxing and kickboxing Muay Thai. And Muay Thai. Okay. Uh, but even though I was from an MMA school, mm. I wanted to master my stand-up game. I see. Then I had five years ago. I had a huge car crash. Like, car crash. Yeah, huge Cars. Car crash. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where I couldn't grapple for five years. What what happened? The car crash. It, it just like hit hit like snow on the road in the UK, and oh. I span. Uh, it's crazy because where I crashed, literally, I could look and the cemetery was there. Cemetery. Yeah, that, I was just spinning. It was so scary. It was foreshadowing, you know. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is crazy. You're coming to us. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> honestly, so uh, my recovery. I was recovering, and then COVID happened, so I stopped training, and everything just went a bit backwards mm -hmm. with my recovery mm -hmm. process. But then June this year, I started grappling again, so I'm feeling it. I'm sparring more. Uh, I'm just ready for a comeback, hopefully soon. That's fair. Um, uh, I wanted to ask you just, just a random question about the fighters in the MMA. I'm going to throw three, four names, and I mm -hmm. want your opinion of the fighters. Brock Lesnar, as an MMA fighter. He was very powerful, mm. explosive. As mm. a actual human, he was huge. I think he had the biggest fist in the UFC. So wow. he was The biggest like, fist? The yeah, biggest so fist. <laughs> His was like four extra large or something. Wow. So literally his hand was huge. Mm, mm. Uh, you saw his physique, his weight, mm -hmm. very explosive. And that's why he had so much power. Technically, like his grappling wasn't, even though he was a wrestling he base, a yeah, he wrestling was a wrestler. Yeah. I'm talking about jiu-jitsu and stuff. Right, right. When he right. got put in bad positions mm. and his last two or three fights, he got punched in the face. He couldn't take the punch and he would, he would get really scared. I think he got disqualified for the last fight for using enhancements. Yeah, he was yeah. always, yeah, yeah, if you look yeah. at he, from his whole wrestling career. Uh, Conor McGregor. Technically, obviously, he, he did amazing things. Mm -hmm. He took European MMA to a different level. Mm -hmm. He was he's striking, amazing. And then he met Habib. He met Habib. That, was, he met that Habib. was the third name. That was yeah. the third name I was going to bring up. When you Habib. Meet, Habib, legend. 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 On and off the mat. Okay. Uh, unbelievable. Undefeated. Mm. Undisputed, literally for me, my favorite fighter. Now I'm gonna pivot 
to someone who was controversial in the MMA world, had two matches and left. CM Punk. What do you think? <laughs> he should have stuck with the WWE. <laughs> <laughs> this MMA he's world. He's back healthy. now. He's back now. No, no, no. He's, he's, no, no. He should have. That was a bad. Uh, but he wanted it. He wanted to try it. So at least give him that, that he actually went out and tried it. Yeah. It was a dream of his. And I think yeah. you should pursue, like, if you're interested in something, give it a shot. Why not, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so and he I did actually train. He, he, train. he, he, he took he, his he, shot. He took and a shot and yeah. he trained, yeah. did a long camp, and those two fights are too big to prepare for. Yeah. But he came short, came up short. He actually yeah. trained with a jiu-jitsu fighter, yeah. so he did his yeah. camp. He did. I think he was a bit old. He was in his... 30. Well, 30, it was if 30, 40s. Yeah, yeah, mid-30s. Well, he did and, it. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Lashley. He went from WWE. Bobby Lashley. Bobby, Bobby Lashley, Lashley actually yeah. did okay. He, he did okay. Like, he did okay. Is 30, 40 really old and like... In their sports, yeah. I would say so. The younger um, you are, the, the yeah, better. Yeah, you're you're towards, you are, yeah, you're prime towards coming towards your end. Um, I know uh, Batista had two fights. Batista had two <laughs> fights. Batista yeah, had two fights. That wasn't... They should yep, have yep. stuck with uh, tables, <laughs> ladders, and chairs. Tables, ladders. Yeah, yeah. It's just more entertaining for me. When there's a script, when yeah. there's a story, okay. and MMA is just grappling on the floor most of the time. They're just hugging each other. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 a lot no, of the time, no, I no, see no. them hugging on the no, ground. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is this is an art. This is technique. I know, I know, I know. But the best story for me was Habib Conor McGregor. Mm. Hab uh, Conor attacked the boss. Mm. You know when he yeah, threw yeah, everything yeah, at the yeah, boss. Yeah, yeah. It was back and forwards. Who's your favorite fighter all time? Mm. Habib. Habib, okay, Habib. I got that, I got it right. Yeah, I was yeah, like yeah. giving you three options yeah, and yeah. picked one of them. Everything in and out of the cage, he took it to a different level. All his students level. are now becoming champions. Wow. His uh, best friend, Islam, champion. Nice. His cousin, Uthman, champion. His other cousin, Omar, <laughs> becoming, literally champions. the whole family is becoming wow. champions. Wow, that's, that's, that's amazing. Family of champions. Um, where do you see yourself in the MMA world and if like in the next five ten years you want to be training a champion you want to be a champion yourself I right now I'm 32 okay so I still got a few more years to keep on competing to keep on going uh, so yeah, I just want to give it all my all in competing and then teaching I want to help teach the next generation N to teach the next generation teach them be a coach, etc. So, do you really think social media has influenced the you know martial arts industry? Um, I, growing up, we used to watch you know like Bruce Lee, Jack Chan movies that made us want to be in, like them. And uh, some of us maybe, or some girls, even girls, have tried g g going into that field. But do you think social media changed the way people look at martial arts? Yes, huge. Now. Um Instagram, TikTok, you've got all the coaches that train and teach their skill sets online. So it's opening up and giving more wider knowledge because there's so many different coaches giving their own expertise, their own tips and tricks for people to learn. People see things and they're not scared of different environments. Like I, I teach, I have several, many uh, female clients and they see and then they become comfortable and then it just everybody just becomes um, more confident, you know? They see, okay, somebody's doing it, okay, I can do it. You know, before, you had to go to a class. But now social media, you just look, oh, right. this looks amazing, I can join this class. There's other people having fun, I can do this. You know, then you can contact straight away. Because honestly, one of the scariest thing is turning up to a martial arts school for your first time. So, uh, speaking about first-timers who want to join mar martial arts, what are the misconceptions and the wrong ideas people have about martial arts and the fears they have? Before you go on, I'll let you answer that question. But first, we're going to go on a break, then we'll come back with the answer. Awesome. So we're back, and before the break, I was asking you about the misconceptions and the fears that people have, you know, joining the first time uh, to train for martial arts. So... So most people are scared because they think martial arts, they think combat, they think blood, they think fighting. Right. I'm going to have to get hit. Mm. You know, it's my scary. Face. But yeah, you, it's my face. My, is you my can't face avoid gonna... that in MMA. You can because like in my classes, beginners, there's no headshots. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. There's always rules. So mm. there's always safety precautions, you know, from the get go. Mm -hmm. So your beginner, no headshots, nice, nice and light. Just working technique, working your fitness, and then once you get to a level, then you slowly progress. And then obviously there's all the protection gear you have to wear. Mouth guard, if you're going to go to that right, level. Right. Head gear, mm. hand wraps, shin guards. 
So you, we always make sure everything's safe. Everything's fun. Everything's enjoyable. You remember, you're here to learn the art. It's martial art. It's an art. Right, it's an art. Yeah, this it's is not art. like brawling outside. This is an art. Mm. So the coaches that take it as an art, teach it as an art. You know, we take it seriously, professional, make That's it enjoyable. Answer, and then people come, answer. I always like, for your first time, come and watch. Don't take part. Come mm, on, watch, watch. Have a view. See what you think. Mm, mm. And then ask lots of questions. You mm. know, some people are scared to ask a question. What do we do? <laughs> but more, like some, most people ask, or co communicate with, message me on Instagram. What do I do? What do I have to do? What shall I bring? What's the class structure? Etc. Et and then I'll tell you. Make you feel comfortable. Mm. Don't worry. Oh. I mean... It, it is kind of your specialty. I it think. is not. I like I mean, fake fighting. You That's like what fake. I like. You like <laughs> like the rocks. Oh, oh, like the no. rock, huh? Oh, the rock oh, is, no. is the rock. <laughs> These baby oil oh, God, fighters. Um, <laughs> baby oil baby fighters. Oil baby fighters. oil fighters. Baby oil fighters. <laughs> he uses at least two tubs a day just for yeah, head. Two, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, his daughter has uh, got involved in the... She is uh, currently a wrestler. Ava, she's I think it up. is. I'm not sure the Her name, name is Ava. She, she, she is got actually, involved in the wrestling. Uh, but it's all show, right? It's all not. show. Everything from the... And people still enjoy it. Yes. You know, I remember watching it growing up. Mm -hmm. The Undertaker, Kane, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Triple H. Triple H. These guys were very entertaining. But now then Triple H is controlling the creative now. He's doing the yeah, storylines. Yeah, yeah. He owns, I think, He doesn't own it, but yeah, he's yeah, the yeah. son-in-law of the owner, yeah, yeah, yeah. previous owner. Um, <laughs> but once you learn that all the materials are fake, yeah, the, the ring is fake, it's all cushioned. Well, it's, it's, not, like it's cushioned. actually not that it's cushioned. cushioned. You've been in a boxing ring. Yeah. Isn't that really hard? F uh, like ground, floor? Like floor. It's it's there's a level of wood yeah. and a bit of mattress, okay. but it's still hard to fall on. Yeah. You're still gonna... You're still gonna hurt. It's still gonna hurt. So when it comes to like I, what we see on TV from, you know... From my world or his world. Your world. My world is all make pretend, but there is... <laughs> make pretend. Make pre but, but, but there are injuries. There are people get hurt. It's still a professional I don't think sport. they do it on, 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 like, on purpose. No, no, accidentally. Accidentally. And it happens all the time. So it makes it still a dangerous place. I know some of the things that yeah. when I saw Rey Mysterio jumping yeah, off jumping high Jeff places. Jeff Hardy from 30 feet. Yeah, the, that's I do respect it. Mick Foley, remember? Yeah, yeah. I off do. the top of the hell, uh, hell in a cell. Okay, I do respect it. That's things a lot. Like that. stunts. Okay. They're stunts. They they're, are they're stunt they do makers. practice. Yeah. Um, but when you're hitting each other over the head with plastic or paper chairs. <laughs> plastic chairs? I thought they were plastic chairs. They, plastic they chair. banned the chair shots to the head. They, a guy can just do this like, you know. Really? Yeah, I thought yeah, it was yeah. real. The cars aren't real. The glass isn't real. My, my childhood self is shocked. It is entertainment until is. someone decided to make MMA a thing and just fight for real. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, just no. Fight for real. they reality. <laughs> I don't know, like as a viewer, why would I want why would I wanna watch two grown men fight for real? <laughs> because this is what we did from the start of time. The gladiators, guess, the gladiators. from Greece, yeah, yeah. from Rome. We've that's done a good it from that, that's a good comeback. That's a good Honestly, comeback. Honestly, that's where it all came from. Okay, fair. We've been doing fair. it from day one. So your goals and ambitions are in the MMA field. Yes. You want to train the next generation. Yeah. What is the training process in terms of workouts? Not just the MMA part, but the conditioning, the fitness mm -hmm. part. And what kind of? Uh, and would you like refuse to train anyone for you know any medical reasons or anything? Um, so it's a safety issue, maybe. The first uh, part. So fitness is now a huge part. Strength and conditioning, we call it, for an athlete. So you do have the martial arts where you learn skills. But now, obviously, with the fitness industry booming, we have to learn the strength and conditioning to help enhance the athlete, to make them more powerful, stronger, faster. So that's where you do all your weight training, your high intensity training, use specific equipment like battle ropes, kettlebells, mm -hmm. you know, to really enhance you, to make you faster, explosive, more durable. So that's definitely a big factor. And to your question, we have m many people with different injuries or different mm. illnesses that come and we try to adapt. You know, right. um, once one of my students, he was half paralyzed. Half paralyzed. Oh. Yeah. So it was a really emotional case. His mother got in contact with me. He's, he's half paralyzed from his left hand, left side. Okay. But because obviously he's bullying at school, she got in contact with me. Can you teach him? Yes. We can still teach. We adapt. Mm. And honestly, his confidence levels, his improvement, he was learning how to punch, catch kicks, and everything. 
it was really a really amazing situation. So yeah, well, it was all, everything you can adapt to any situation, you know. I mean, I didn't. I guess and what? I don't know. What? I. I I don't you know. want to try it? I don't want to try it. No. It feels yeah. like you want to try it. No, maybe I don't. Should After I? After the yes. convos we had about high school, I think you want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> That's behind the scenes behind secrets. The scenes. Nobody should know about this, Ahmed. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I mean, it would be interesting. But I girl, I guess some girls are just afraid, you know, like um, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to hurt my face. I don't want to, you know. I know. I've seen questions. a huge increase now, even in Kuwait. Of With female people doing really. Some yeah. of my students are doctors by day. Doctors by day, MMA. Honestly, by night? kickboxing, boxing, sparring with all the guys. I mean, kickboxing seems a little more, you know. Yeah, even boxing, everything. Easier. Yeah, it's, it's because uh, obviously no groundwork, no grappling involved. But honestly, the females is going huge. Speaking of females, I feel like I left them out in my uh, fighters. So. But all I know is Ronda Rousey and the person that beat Ronda Rousey. <laughs> Holly Holmes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So who's your favorite female fighter? Um, he doesn't have any. <laughs> he does, he does. Uh, Give him a second. See, Ronda was amazing. Her Ronda judo, was amazing. Her judo was amazing. Yeah. Uh, like, literally, world class. And she was the first one to take it to that level. Right. You know? she, she took it to a mainstream level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a few There's a few more coming through that are very okay. strong. There's the Joanna. Joanna. Yeah. Joanna, her stand up was amazing. Her Muay Thai skills, amazing. She could like really smash. Right. She was smashing faces. She was crazy. <laughs> smashing faces. Smashing faces <laughs> and taking face names. <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe you won. I'm pivoting back to football. But in 2006, you won a tournament. Yes. Could you tell me more about that and how that came together? So I was. At what age were you at? 15? 15 okay. or 16? It you was won a you did a lot about it. Yeah. What a tournament that age. That's so this was in Emirates Mall okay. in Dubai. Oh. Obviously right. at that time it was the biggest right. best mall right. in Dubai. And it was held by Brian Robson, who was the former captain of Manchester United. Okay. So obviously Man Manchester United, one of the biggest teams in the world. Brian mm -hmm. Robson, one of the most legendary players. He held an event and all former Manchester United and mm. Liverpool players were there. So it's huge. The TV stations, the news channel, the whole mall was packed. And it was full of like all the best footballers in the Khalid. They brought everybody. Right. And they were doing one-on-one -on -one tournaments. I won the tournament. It was amazing. But honestly, one of the best days of my life. Like, and then I obviously got presented with an, with an award by the form, former champions, the players, in front of everybody. It was an amazing day. And because I brought my mother, father, brother and sister, my grandparents were there. Just... Every, seeing everyone there at the time was amazing. Wow. And while we're in Dubai in the topic, I wanted to ask this question. Born and raised in the UK, then you moved at age 14 to Dubai. Yeah. What was the culture shock for you like? Obviously not knowing Arabic. Right. Because um, I was in high school. And so Dubai at that time, what year? Uh, when you moved? 20, 2005? Yeah, something like that. Something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. it was a different Dubai than yeah, the yeah, Dubai. Yeah, yeah, a lot less expats. A lot less expats. Right. So, um, so what was the culture shock for you as a 14-year-old British person coming to Dubai? Just literally just learning Arabic. I, the language? Look, yeah, the language barrier. The language barrier. Um, luckily, I had my friends who taught me a little bit, my mm. Emirati friends. Nice. And obviously, when you move... Like Europe is very similar right, wherever you go, right, right. but then when you come you to came to the Middle East, yeah, different. every see different cultures, every, different yeah, yeah. traditions. That's what I'm trying to get. You don't know any. You don't know where to anything. expect. Where to go? You don't know where to go. Where like where the malls are? Right, right. You know, you literally do not know do not anything. Know. I don't know the way to school. And I think most of the. But was it a positive experience the first few months? And, uh, Amazing. The, moving Amazing. to the Khalid was the best thing I ever did, and that's why I keep. What on. about the weather? I mean, here it's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> did you adjust to that? Yeah. I was playing football outside in the summer, coaching outside in the summer. He's ready for this. One. Yeah, I remember there was one <laughs> summer, we'd, it was Ramadan and we were doing it outside mm -hmm. and it was crazy. Oh. Like, but you just get used to when you're young, you right, can do anything. Right. When, when you get older, young. you become softer. It's like, ah, oh, so you become true. softer. When That's you're true. young, you're always playing outside on the streets anyway. I was playing yeah. football I mean, in the uh, desert and everything. You know, the good generation, you know, not the current generation that's on all on their own phones and iPads oh. and stuff. And they want to go to the mall. <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, great experiences all around. I wanted to get your reaction on when you heard the two companies merging, my world and your world, uh, being owned by one company. 
How did you feel about that uh, deal being made? It's controlling everything. Controlling everything. <laughs> everything. Whoever the owners my are, they fear, control everything now. My fear is your world gets a bit scripted because of my world. Everything, definitely everything right? becomes... Uh, yeah. Before, there was a lot of conflict between the athletes. Mm -hmm. But I think that's going to... Because gonna get, gonna obviously, go down, like yeah. um, Dana White's not going to talk about WWE right, athletes as right, Before, right. they would all call each other yeah, out. Yeah, they would call but each other out. Yeah. Connor fight, called yeah. everyone out. And yeah. I believe a lot of wrestlers would give him a lot of receipts yes. because of the size difference. I think now a lot more MMA fighters will go to WWE. Will go into WWE. Because, because we've seen of, it before, yeah, some yeah, of them yeah. uh, moved across. I think Daniel Cormier did, mm -hmm. moved across, did some commentating, maybe did one or two right. fights. Right. But now they move over. They, they are. Towards they the are. end of their career. There's crossover stars now. For a big payday, they'll go big to payday. WWE. Absolutely. And now being owned by both companies makes it easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you've been training in Kuwait for how long? A more than a year and a half. So, what is your over, you know, view on um, how, you know, the youth here in Kuwait and uh, their interest in, uh, you know, uh, martial arts? M martial arts with the youth is progressing so much right now. I see it not just on social media, but with the people that come up to my classes. And I think the adults in jiu-jitsu and martial arts in Kuwait are going to the next level. Now, now recently within the last month, there was a Kuwaiti athlete that won a tournament in Dagestan, which mm. is Habib's place. So okay. imagine. And then recently there was a Kuwaiti that won the European Championship. So these athletes are now giving motivation to the next generation who are taking inspiration. And it's amazing to see, they're all talking about everything. They know so much about the sport. They know the athletes, they know the game. So in Kuwait now, it's going to a different level now, which is good to see. Yeah. 10 years, honestly, you'll have so many champions in not just jiu-jitsu, but all the different various aspects of martial arts. If you're going to give an advice to the younger generation who's interested in the martial arts, what would that be advice? Discipline, patience. This is a long-term game. Mm. Discipline, I think, with the new generation is kind of harder. They, very they hard, very hard. Because the time you again, need... Again, it's on you, the parents. I mean, yes. we can't yes. fully blame the parents. I mean, sometimes the kids are just rebellious. Again, yes, but it's parents your control. responsibility. I, it works two ways. Basically, for me as an athlete growing up, mm -hmm. I went through the whole process. So you need the discipline for your parents. But me as an athlete, I take responsibility to do my own work. I have to do the extra work in the gym. I have to do extra miles on the road running to do my flexibility when I'm at home. So, you know, I know youth now, they don't, have, like you said, straight to the iPhone. Right. But in my generation, it was go to the gym, do your stretches. Gym, you have to go run outside. You have to do your extra work. There wasn't to anything to do at home but watch TV and you only have a few hours to Honestly, do that. Yeah. 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 All right, before we uh, wrap up, I just had one, uh, want to end it on a high note. Dream match. One person from your world, one person from mine. Who you would pick? Uh, and then I'll choose someone. <laughs> I John think Jones. You'll go for Khabib. Khabib. I'm gonna go John Jones. Really? Yeah. Because now, now he's at heavyweight. Okay. He's a killer. I would send in Brock Lesnar. I have to. I but have to send in. So Brock these Lesnar. two, they want to f like everybody wants them to. Fight. Oh, they want yeah, them yeah. to fight. That but is a dream match. John Jones would kill him any day. John Jones Honestly. would kill Brock Lesnar. You heard it here. <laughs> Only on the Untold. I mean, his. That's a dream match. World is real. Yeah. Brock Lesnar fought in both worlds. Is so that, relax. Is that Brock Lesnar <laughs> with or without steroids? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I won. He went there. He I went, went there. You went there. You went there. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you guys. Great episode. I really enjoyed talking to you Thank about you uh, MMA and my world a bit. Yeah. Your uh, world. I love how you call it your world. Like everyone you own knows it. whose world it is. <laughs> that is all the time we have for the Untold. Stay tuned for the wrap up. We'll be right back. Thank you. was a fun episode it was i might have stolen the spotlight tonight you but did. you know i'm just excited when i talk about i wrestling. let you steal it so thank you i let thank you, you. you're so I generous because you're so you're excited so kind <laughs> <laughs> okay talking about baby fights baby fights <laughs> you, you know that's what he called it baby oil fights Baby oil, he think he's, he was talking about the baby oil they use on their body. Anyway, anyway, thank you for tuning in. This is The Untold. Tune in next time. New guest, same time, same place on KTV2. Good night. Good night.